Hey everyone, welcome back to MNMMPT Nati YouTube channel. This is Manmohit. Now in today's video, I am going to start the full course for the PTE exam. Now this full course would be divided into four different videos just to make it more convenient for you guys to prioritize and plan and then prepare for the PTE exam. Me and Mohit have been teaching PTE for almost six years now, more than six years actually, helped thousands of students clearing their PTE exam, whether they were aiming for 50, 65, 79, or even getting a perfect 90. So based on our experience for six plus years, whatever we have learned, whatever we have taught, I am going to combine all my experience in there, all the tips, all the tricks, all the strategies, every single thing that you guys need, whether you're aiming for 50, or 65 or 79 or as a matter of fact even a perfect 90 this video this video series i would say four videos the full course is going to be applicable for every single one of you out there so without wasting any further ado it's going to be the long videos have your pen and notebook ready take good notes understand have any questions do leave them down in the comment section below and let's start with this video. First thing first, once you start with your PT exam, obviously this video is also going to cater to students who are pretty new to the PT exam, who are beginners of PT, who doesn't know anything about PT. And also obviously for students who have given the PT exam before. Now, when you go and give your exam and you sit on a computer screen, you will be given obviously the terms and conditions that you need to accept. You enter in your email address and all that stuff. You accept all those terms and conditions. The first screen that you will actually get in the real exam would be this screen, PTE microphone check. Now this screen is the backbone of your PTE exam, or I would say especially at least for three modules. If you do not do much in this screen and if you just start with the exam, trust me, you will not get your desired scores because 90% of the times the students miss their desired scores is because they do not check the microphone position right. I would also be referring to other videos over here as well if you want to watch the other ones. There's one video from me which is in regards to the best microphone position. If you want to understand that in detail, the link for that one would be there in the description. You can watch that one as well after this. But for now, what we need to understand is microphone position because it's a computer based exam. You guys would be wearing the headphones with the microphone right next to it. Your job is to make sure the microphone is at the ideal position. I've seen many students, they'll take the mic, just put it right next to the mouth and the voice that is being recorded in the microphone, it's so loud that the computer software cannot understand what you have spoken. You lose marks for that one. Because in the PT exam, the score sharing happens. That means the marks that you get in speaking also get contributed based on the topics in your writing and the, sorry, not writing, in the listening and the uh, reading module. So we have to understand how efficient we have to be with the mic position. You cannot have it very next to your mouth, very close to your mouth. You also cannot have it very far away so that computer doesn't understand anything. You don't even have to speak very loud. You just have to make sure the microphone is at the ideal position. The two things that you need to check while checking your microphone position would be, obviously, if there is any other student's voice getting recorded in the microphone, that means other students who are going to be sitting next to you. If their voice is being recorded, that is one thing that you need to eliminate. And secondly, you have to make sure the voice is not echoing. That means when you speak, you're not just hearing yourself double and all that. You can actually hear yourself very clearly. Because in this, if you see over here, you have got the record button, and then you have got the playback, and then you have got the stop. When you click on record, you start speaking out something, it starts getting recorded. Afterwards, you can click on this playback and you can start listening to your audio. And if you feel it's good enough, you can move towards the next screen by clicking on this next button. If you feel that it's not correct, you can just stop and then click on record button again. Keep on recording it as many times as you want, unless you feel confident that the microphone is at the right position. For the full length video, you can definitely watch the one in the description after this. But for now, understand how important this concept is. There is, if you look at over here, there is no timer given on microphone position check screen. That means even the Pearson wants you to check your microphone properly before moving towards the next screen. Take your time. I'm not saying just stay there for half an hour. Take five, seven good minutes. Make sure the microphone is on the correct position and then move towards the next topic and then move, uh, move towards doing your exam afterwards. Once you're done with the microphone check, now before the introduction, there would be another screen and that would be PTE, not the microphone check, but the speaker check. Basically, that's just the opposite of the microphone check. That means here you can test how good are the headphones and can you hear the audio which is being played in certain topics or not. Now, by default, the audio would be at 50%, but my recommendation would be to change it to at least, at least 80. 
but what i do in the exam is i always make sure my volume is at 100 percent because if it's loud it's good if it's low because of other students sitting next to you you may not be able to hear them properly so have at least at least 80 percent and only then proceed with the exam yes during the topics as well you can just toggle the thing and just you know drag and drop it here and there just to increase or decrease the volume but prefer doing and making all these changes before starting the exam rather than playing with that during the topics once you're done with the microphone check this is the very first screen that you get in the real exam and that is the pt introduction now this screen starts now here the timer would be there but again you don't have to worry about this part now what do you understand by introduction introduction simply means you have to introduce yourself obviously but here if you have a look they will all already give you certain questions that you can take as an example to answer understand one thing there is no marks for this particular topic so whatever you speak in there it is just for the psn's records so that in the future if you apply for any sort of universities they can have access to your introduction just to id you properly but then this particular part this particular question doesn't involve any mark so even if you skip it out even if you do not speak anything even if you just speak anything gibberish doesn't even if that doesn't make any sense you will not lose any marks obviously do not just skip this out in the real exam use this time to practice and warm up your throat because after that you would be start starting with your speaking module so what you can do is just answer the questions in the sequence something like hi my name is Manmohit and i am giving this pt exam for my permanent residency purpose or let's say for my university purposes to do higher studies my interest involves singing and playing cricket you can say my plans for future study are that i want to do masters and i want to do phd as well in the future the reason i want to study abroad is so that i can gain experience from the other cultures and experience of the other country the reason i need to learn english is that so that i can be proficient in that language as well alongside the other languages that i'm already proficient in and the reason i chose this test is because it's a computer-based exam so it is more convenient for me the time slots were available and i've heard good reviews about the exam so that's why i'm giving pt academic so just create something on the spot or you can even memorize an answer before the exam that's perfectly fine like i said there's no marks for this topic so do not get scared with this one do not prepare much just speak something confidently fluently and warm up your throat and move towards the next topic and the next topic which is the first topic of your exam and that's going to be your read aloud if you look at this now, this is how the read aloud topic will look like in the real exam. So you will have the heading over here, obviously. Something like look at the text below in 35 seconds. You must read this text aloud as naturally and clearly as possible. You have 35 seconds to read aloud. If you see whatever number of seconds they will give you to prepare for a paragraph would be the exact amount of time they would be giving you to speak out the answer. You get three different time frames for read aloud. You either get 30 seconds, you either get 35 seconds or you either get 40 seconds either one of them so they will give you time based on how lengthy the paragraph is in this case that's i would say it's decent enough so that's why they have given you 35 seconds if the paragraph was slightly longer they would have given you 40 seconds as well so in this case the way the read aloud works is first of all let's understand a bit of basic about the read aloud so number of questions you still get six to seven questions in the real exam for read aloud preparation time like we discussed you get either 30 seconds 35 seconds or 40 seconds answering time as in the recording time it is still going to be 30 35 or 40 seconds based on how much time you got for preparation in terms of marking you get marks in your reading module and also the speaking module in speaking you get about 20 to 25 marks out of 90 the exam is total of 90 marks and in the reading module you get about 35 to 40 marks out of 90. so by just looking at the amount of marks that you're getting for this topic you can already see how important this is so this is one topic we cannot take for granted it's the backbone of your complete exam and obviously also the first topic of your exam so we have to be very very good in that one just so that we do not get nervous for the remaining exam and obviously the amount of marks we get is insane so we have to be very good in this one now three things that they are being testing or i would say three things that they are being checking for this particular topic are your fluency then it's your pronunciation and another one is your content so for all the three components you get five points each now these are not marks out of 90 these are just the points a scale from one to five 
one being the lowest and then five being the highest and that's for all of them all three are equally important in this particular topic fluency means how fluent you are like as in how smooth is your speech speed has not much to contribute in this one yes you have to be not just speaking very slow but again you don't have to speak like a bullet train to get a full score in this one as long as you're speaking naturally you should be all good in terms of pronunciation you have to be loud now loud doesn't mean you have to scream loud means loud enough so that the computer can understand what you're saying and another thing is you have to be clear clear as in clarity the clarity factor is very important if you're not clear computer cannot understand you there's no human being involved while checking your exam so you will not actually get any marks so make sure that you're very clear content means obviously whatever is given in the paragraph is your content now I'll just do a sample answer for you guys over here just so you can understand how this topic works and what exactly is computer expecting from you just so that you get have a better idea of what to expect so this is how I would be speaking this once you've picked a general topic for your paper you need to come up with a thesis your thesis is the main and focal point of your paper and it's the position you will take on your particular topic formulating a strong thesis is one of the most important things you need to do to ace your paper so this is how I would be speaking in the real exam. Now, if you would have heard me speaking, I did not change my accent. I just stick to my same accent that I have. Even in the real exam, whichever nationality you have, whatever accent you have, it doesn't matter because computer can understand all the accents. That's called machine learning. They have got such an advanced software that they can understand pretty much all the accents because they have got so many of the sample answers from the real human beings that's what they compare you, your answers with so you have to make sure i've seen many students they try to change their accent to match it with let's say australian american british and all that to get more marks you don't have to do that it's not required just stick to your own accent but what you have to make sure is you are fluent you're pronouncing all the words correctly and you're not messing up with the content now when i spoke now what happens in the exam is when you get the preparation time as you can say beginning in 31 seconds it starts at 35 when you get that preparation time your job is to start speaking out that particular paragraph loudly i've seen many students they read the paragraph in their mind you will not get anywhere if you just read the paragraph in your mind make sure you're speaking the paragraph loudly because when you speak loudly that's when your brain can comprehend that what words are you struggling to speak what words can you cannot pronounce properly what I'll do is in 35 seconds, I'll just speak out the complete paragraph. And then I will understand as to what words that I feel that I can struggle in, uh, what words I feel that I cannot pronounce properly. And then what I'll do is let's say I took 15 or 20 seconds to speak out the complete paragraph. Remaining seconds, I'll start focusing on those words which I feel I may mess up in the pronunciation part. Keep on repeating the same word again and again. For example, formulating, formulating, thesis keep on repeating once the recording starts you will hear a beep sound in your microphone in your sorry headphone and then when you start speaking because you have already pronounced that word multiple times you will not struggle and you will be able to speak more fluently and you would be getting a full score in the pronunciation once the recording starts let's say if you finish your paragraph in 20 seconds for example if you're still remaining with 15 seconds do not wait for the audio to finish do not wait for the recording timer to finish the next button is there for a reason click on the next button and move towards the next stop next question do not just wait over there because if you do not speak for 10 15 seconds and just wait for the recording to finish the other students who are sitting right next to you chances are their recording their audio may get recorded in your answer and based on that you may lose marks because it's a computer software you finish your answer click on next and move towards the next question so this is how read aloud works another thing in read aloud is the proper enunciation of the words the proper i would say rhythm of the words stress level of the words intonation that's what i mean now when i if there's a difference between a robot and a human being we are not to speak like a machine we do not have to speak like a robot we have to speak like a human being that means a human being has feelings rhythm intonation the way we take our voice louder on certain words and we lower our volume on certain words that's what you have to follow i'll speak out the same paragraph in two versions you guys will understand what i'm trying to say one version is once you have picked a general topic for your paper you need to come up with a thesis your thesis is a main and focal point of your paper and is the position you will take on your particular topic formulating a strong thesis is one of the most important things you need to do to ace your paper versus once you have picked a general topic for your paper 
you need to come up with a thesis. Your thesis is the main and focal point of your paper, and it's the position you will take on your particular topic. Formulating a strong thesis is one of the most important things you need to do to ace your paper. Wherever you see important words, you need to take your voice louder. Wherever you see not important words, you have to speak in a normal volume. Another thing that I did was wherever I saw the punctuations like full stop, comma and all that, I took a slight pause. I've seen many students making this mistake of speaking the complete paragraph without taking even a single breath, completing the same paragraph in one breath. Guys, it's not required. Even if you're aiming for a perfect 90, it's not required. What would happen is if you speak the complete paragraph in a flow, yes, you may get your full score in the speaking because speaking, it's all about fluency, but then you will lose marks in reading because your paragraph didn't make any sense to the computer. You have to make sure that you intonate. You have to make sure that you take slight pauses. I'm not just saying take long pauses, slight pauses, catch your breath and start speaking out the next sentence straight away. This is how a perfect read aloud is done. So the next topic is repeat sentence. Now, as the name says, they you are going to listen to an audio and then your job is to speak out the same sentence, repeat a sentence. And this is how the real exam screen will look like for you. You will have these two boxes over here. The top one will show you the status like playing, recording and all that. And the bottom would be with the recording. You would be able to see the recording has started and all that. Now, that's the volume bar that I was referring to. So if you want, you can increase it here, but I would prefer increasing the volume at the very beginning of the exam to 80% or 100, just so that you don't, because the topics are so quick, you won't have enough time to do so to play around with this during the audio. So make sure that the volume is already at 80 or 100% at the very beginning. Now, for this particular topic, as you can see, you will hear a sentence. Please repeat the sentence exactly as you hear it. You will hear the sentence only once. So this topic in terms of number of change it to white. So in terms of number of sentences, you get about 10 to 12 sentences in the exam. In terms of the preparation time, it'll give you three seconds. After three seconds, the audio will start to play. The audio is going to be anywhere between three to five seconds. Once the audio finishes, the recording starts straight away. You don't get any time to take notes or think about it. The recording starts straight away and you have to speak within three seconds, within the first three seconds. Otherwise the recording will stop and you will lose that complete sentence. Now, in terms of recording timer, you get 15 seconds, but obviously you will not require 15 seconds to complete your answer because if the sentence is three to five seconds, you would take similar amount of time to speak out the sentence. In terms of marking, you get the marks in listening and speaking both because you're listening to an audio and then you're speaking it out as well. It's roughly going to be about 30 to 35 marks in listening and same goes in speaking 30 to 35 marks. So again, very, very, very important topic of your speaking exam and also this time for the listening module as well. So we have to be extra careful with this one to make sure we get the full score for this particular topic as well. Now, even in this topic, there's three things that are being tested by the computer and that's your fluency your pronunciation and content. Now here, fluency is on a scale of one to five. Pr pronunciation is on a scale of one to five and content is on a scale of one to three. Now, whenever I tell my students that, look, the content is on a scale of one to three, they tend to think that, look, if it's only up to three, whereas fluency and pronunciation are up to five, that means content should not be that important. Absolutely not. The scale is one to three, but that doesn't mean the content isn't important. As a matter of fact, fluency and pronunciation scores are going towards your speaking. And just the content part itself is going towards your listening. So this is what we need to understand how important this topic is. If you look at the marking that I gave you earlier, how important it is in listening and speaking both equal marks in both of them, 30 to 35 marks out of 90. So there's no way in the world we can take this topic for granted in terms of content, because I've seen many students, what they do is because they think that, okay, content is less. So they'll just speak something. They'll speak fluently. Yes, they would be getting a full score in the speaking, but alongside their listening is getting impacted. So we have to make sure that every single word is being spoken correctly. Now, Based on how much scores you're aiming for, there is a marginal chance of error that you can make in here. If I just start with anyone who's aiming for a perfect 90 or 90, 
that doesn't mean you guys have to speak all the sentences perfectly yes in the exam your aim should be speaking all this all the words correctly all the sentences correctly but even if you're aiming for a perfect 90 out of let's say 10 sentences that you get if you speak eight sentences perfect and the remaining two sentences you speak at least at least 50 percent content you should be all good to still get a perfect 90. As a matter of fact, even in my exam where I got listening 90 and speaking 90 as well, I did not speak all the sentences perfectly. It's not possible humanly to speak all the sentences perfectly. What I did was I spoke eight sentences perfectly and the remaining two sentences, because they were quite long, I was able to speak about 60 to 70% of them. I know I did not speak them perfectly, but I knew I spoke at least more than half of those sentences and I got 19 my listening and I got 19 my speaking as well. So you have to understand this thing that yes, there is a margin of error. So do not go for perfection. Go for how, how many sentences can you speak perfectly? So that simply means if you are aiming for, let's say, as an example, if you're aiming for 79, just as a wild example out of 10 sentences, seven sentences need to be perfect as in 100%. And the remaining three sentences have to be at least 50%. And if someone out there is aiming for 65, out of 10 sentences, you guys need to speak five sentences perfect. And the remaining five, you can even speak 50% and you should be getting your 65, obviously depending on how well you perform in the, in the other topics, because that's not the only topic in the exam, there's other others as well. But if you follow this criteria, you should be all good for a repeat sentence. Now, a couple of things about the repeat sentence topic, and that's, let's say the sentence is, today is a bright, sunny day in Adelaide. So I'm just picking up a very simple sentence just so I can explain you a couple of things over here. Now, as you can see, if you count how many words I have, I've got eight words in this sentence. Anyone who speaks all the eight words as in 100% content will be getting three marks in their content. And if you speak them fluently, confidently, without hesitating, without adding those hesitating words like filler words, uh, um, these kind of words, you'll get full score in fluency and pronunciation as well. So speaking is taken care of and also listening. If someone let's say omit a couple of words. Let's say they did not speak the word A, they did not speak the word in, and you just spoke today is bright sunny day at late. Now what I've done over here now is, if we count, I've spoken one, two, three, four, five, and six words out of how many eight? Was my content 100%? Absolutely not. In that case, I will not be getting a full score. I would be getting less than that. How many now understand that? Let's say six words out of eight, what computer is going to look at is in the real exam is how many words have we actually spoken in sequence. Now the way computer will calculate marks is they'll see that you've spoken two words in sequence over here. Then you have spoken three words in sequence over here. And then you have just spoken one lonely word over here. So in total, according to computer, you have spoken three words in a row, three words out of how many eight words in a sequence. In that case, you will not be. So that's 99% content and that's less than 50% content. In this example, where you just spoke three words in a sequence out of eight, which is less than 50%, you would be getting one mark in the content. Whereas if you were, for example, if you would have spoken the word A as well, and you said today is a bright sunny day at late, you just missed this word. Right now, according to computer, you spoke one, two, three, four, five, six, six words in a sequence out of eight. Is that more than 50%? Yes. That means anywhere between 50 to 90%, you would be getting two marks out of three. That is why I focus on speak as much as you can, but clearly and you know, obviously making sure that it's fluent. Even if you speak at least half sentence or more than that, you should be getting at least two marks out of three in the content and fluency and pronunciation can be a full score if you just maintain that one. So your job is to just speak at least half sentence and more obviously. Now do not go with my words over here that, okay, if sir said that, okay, I've just need to speak half of the sentence correctly in a sequence, that's all good. Now, if you're aiming for 79 or above, you have to make sure you speak at least, at least seven sentences, 100% content correct. 100% means all the words in a sequence without adding any words. 
But yes, worst case scenario, if you speak at least half, you should be all good. And for 65 years, if you just keep on speaking half sentence, but not adding any words in the half sentence, speaking that sentence fluently and speaking that sentence clearly, you should be getting your at least 65 each. But again, this is what I suggest. This is my understanding. If you're aiming for 65, your aim should be getting 79. And if you're aiming for 79, your aim should be getting a perfect 90. Never sell yourself short. If you just prepare for 65 while aiming for 65, there is a chance that you will lack in the exam. So always and always make sure that you get at least prepare for 79 and for 79, you prepare at least for 90. Few other things, if you add any words, let's say if you just speak the last half of the sentence first and the first half of the sentence at the hours, that doesn't really matter. As long as you speak the words in a sequence, you should be getting your marks. That means even if you speak sunny day in Adelaide, or even if you speak today is a bright, either half of the sentence, but in a sequence, you should be counted as four out of eight, which is 50% sentence. So this is how a computer works. Now, even if you say a bright sunny day in Adelaide and you miss the first two words, according to a computer, you spoke six words out of eight in a sequence instead of, you know, all the eight words in a sequence. So you should be getting still two marks out of three in the content. But if you are fluent, plus if you are pronouncing all the words correctly, you should still be getting 12 marks out of 13. So just understand the math and the logic behind this topic, but then your focus should be making sure that you speak as many words as possible in a sequence without adding, omitting or distorting any words. And you should be all good in the repeat sentence topic as well. So this is how repeat sentence works. And also I would be listing a couple of repeat sentence videos in the description as well. If you want to watch those videos, just to get a bit more content, I would say about the repeat sentence topic, but this is how repeat sentence topic works in the real exam. Next topic we have from the speaking module and that's your describe image topic. Now, as the name says, and as you can see how the question looks like in the real exam, there would be an image. There would be this right inside box, which just calculates all the timers like beginning in 25 seconds and all that. And here previous and next look, this is just a practice as screenshot in the exam. You will not have the previous button. Let me clarify that right away in the exam. You will just get the next button. Once you click on next, you cannot go back in the entire exam. Describe image as the name says, you have to describe an image. All right. The, any image could be given to you. Could be a pie chart, bar graph, random image, line graph, all those kind of images, pie charts, diagrams, flow charts. And your job is to, if I just talk about number of images, now previously it used to be about five to seven. Now they've reduced the number of images. You only get three to four. For this particular topic, for any image that you get, you get 25 seconds to prepare. Once the preparation time is over, you get 40 seconds to speak your answer. The ideal time here should be anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds. No, no less than that, no more than that, not required. And in terms of marking, you get about 25 to 30 marks out of 90 and all these marks are going towards your speaking module no other module so i would say very important topic for your at least your speaking module so again this topic is relatively easier as compared to the other ones that we have already done and again we would be doing in the future as well the scoring works again in the similar way fluency pronunciation and the content now like i said even if there's a scale of five each for all three for the content part, this topic is one such topic where content is not that important. What matters the most here is fluency and pronunciation because you're only getting marks in speaking. So computer is only and only concerned about your fluency and pronunciation, nothing else. That's why it's one of the easiest topic out there. Template definitely works. I would be putting the link of the template in the description. Just memorize that template and you should be all good. We have tested that template so, so many of the times that you get a full score with that in the speaking, memorize that template. And in the template, we just need to fill out a couple of keywords in there. Yes, we just cannot just speak the template and expect a full score. We still need to do a bit of, bit of the work, still needs to be a couple of uh, keywords in there, but just pick up the easiest keywords out of the image and you should be all good. Now, if you only can download the template from the description as well, the way it would work is, so this is the template that we have. Like I said, you would be able to download that from the description as well. So four sentences in there, we need to speak all the four sentences just so that we can at least speak for 20 seconds in the real exam. If you read out the first sentence, it says the image describes some important information, nothing to add here. You just speak exactly the same sentence. 
It also provides information about the image in various aspects such as 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 categories and so on. Now category means keywords. Just pick easiest keywords that you can find out of the image and you should be all good. Now the categories also include colors. So you basically are just picking up anything. Now out of the image, the colors, the three colors that I can already see are purple, black, because the text is in black. So I'm just going to write it on the other page. So purple, black, white as well because of the background, which is white. So three colors and then just two keywords could be anything. I'll pick up the easiest ones. I'll pick up Spanish and I can pick Spain, Spanish and Spain. Again, like I said, you can pick anything, but I'm just going to go with these ones, Spanish and Spain. Once you have taken down your four, so I've written actually five categories, I don't even need that. Once you've got your four categories, afterwards, your job is already done. If you have memorized the template, your job is already done. You don't even need new categories. You can repeat them in the other sentences. This is how I would be speaking my describe image. This image describes some important information. It also provides information about the image in various aspects such as purple, black, white, Spanish and so on. It is evident from the image that purple is on the left hand side of the image, whereas on the other hand, black is on the right hand side of the image. In conclusion, we can see that purple is at the top of the image, whereas on the other hand, Spanish is at the bottom of the image. I literally spoke for about 20, 25 seconds. Did I use any new categories? Absolutely not. I just use the same four categories and I just speak I just spoke them out exactly the same categories, repeating them again and again without adding anything new from my side. Just spoke all the four sentences. Whenever I completed a sentence, I took a slight pause and that's when I started with the next sentence. This is what you need to do in the real exam as well. You don't have to speak all four sentences in one breath. It's not going to happen. Just take a slight pause once you complete one sentence and you should be all good. And this just speaking this much in every single image, the three or four images that you get, will get you a full score in your describe image. You don't need to look any further. You don't have to have fancy categories. You don't even have to have the di most difficult categories out of here. Just pick up the easiest keywords and you will be getting a full score in this uh, describe image topic. And that's the only topic which works like this way because it only gives you marks in speaking. Do not try that with any other topic in the speaking. It's not going to work. Content do not compromise that. In this topic, it doesn't really matter. Next topic that we have is the topic called retail lecture. Now, the reason I've got two images over here is now this retail lecture topic can look in two different ways in the real exam. One could be like this just without an image and another one could be like this with an image. Just understand this one thing that I've written right now. Any image that you get in the retail lecture is a distraction to you. I can repeat this again and again in the video. Any image that you get in the retail lecture is a distraction. I've seen many students falling in the trap trying to take information from the image, ultimately not getting much scores in the content part. Computer is not fooled to give you all the information already written when they are still playing a lecture for you. They want you to retell the lecture. They don't want you to retell the image. They want you to retell the lecture. So we have to understand one thing. Any images that are given are for distraction. Do not take any information from the image. Yes, what you can do is when you look at the image, it will give you a mental idea as to what the audio is going to be all about. Right now, by just looking at it, I can see women in the labor force. By just reading out the keyword, it gives me an idea that the lecture is going to be about women in the labor force. But that's about it. Just get this much idea, but do not take any information from the image. Because if you do that, you will maybe get your marks in the speaking like other topics, but you will lose marks in the listening module. So be very mindful of this thing. We are not to take any information from the image. For this particular topic, number of questions that you get now Previously used to be three to four. Now you only get one to two questions. Preparation time. So first preparation time, you get two preparation time for this topic. First preparation time is three seconds. So it will say three, two, one, and then the audio starts to play. Audio is roughly between 30 to 90 seconds. You can be extremely lucky and get a 90 seconds. You can be unlucky like me and you may get 30 second audio as well in your real exam. Once the audio finishes, now that's where you're taking the notes. Afterwards, second preparation time would start. 
and this time it is going to be for seven seconds. So I'll say recording starts in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and afterwards the recording starts. And again, for this one, you would be getting 40 seconds. Now, this is how the retail lecture would work. First preparation time, three seconds, audio plays for 30 to 90 seconds. Then you get seven seconds to be ready to speak. And then for 40 seconds, you have to speak again, anything more than 20 seconds can give you a full scope provided if you have got enough content in there. Now, I know every single student, you know, is aiming for different amount of marks over here, but just for our understanding, let me just clarify this with you. If you are aiming for 79, or as a matter of fact, even if you're aiming for 65, or obviously if you're aiming for a 90, the only thing that works is phrases. Keywords do not work. You can try that for yourself in the exam, but keywords are not going to work. Yes, if you're aiming for 50 or below, this might work for you, but if you're aiming for 65 or above, Keywords, we cannot take keywords as in single words. We just cannot take them. We will not get our, our marks in our listening module. And I forgot about the marks. So in terms of marking, you get the scores in listening and again, speaking both. And in both of them, you are getting about five to 10 marks out of 90. So again, I would say very important topic, especially if you're aiming for 79 for 65. Yes, five to 10 marks. It's a lot. 90 absolutely every single mark, mark counts for you so like i said phrases work keywords do not work sentences like the complete sentence from the audio they work but prefer not taking them because it's not required even if you're aiming for a perfect 90 and if you just take phrases you should be all good now when i say phrases phrases means group of words that come together so it's very important for you to understand the definition of what phrase is. If a sentence says, today is a bright sunny day in Adelaide, let's say that was in the audio. Phrase means group of words. How many words? I've always preferred three words in a row. So even if you say today is a, there's not much information in there, but it was from the audio and it is a phrase, that means you will be getting marks for that one. Bright sunny day, it is a phrase. In Adelaide, so day in Adelaide, it is a phrase. Sunny day in, it is a phrase. A bright sunny, anything can be phrased as long as it was said correctly, as long as all the words were coming together in the audio. This is the, I would say, best part about doing a computer-based exam, and especially PTE, that these kind of things would work. If a human being was taking your exam, you will obviously not get any marks for this kind of stuff, but yes, in PTE exam, it definitely works. So yes, you can do that. Now. The way I would be taking my notes in the real exam is when the audio is being played, the notebook that I'm given in the exam, I would always make a plus like this, dividing my screen into four different quadrants. Because in my retail lecture template, I am going to speak four sentences in there. My note taking is going to work something like this. I would be taking notes for my very first sentence here. I would be taking notes for my second sentence here third sentence here and fourth sentence here. The reason I've divided my screen into four parts and even in the real exam, computer is not gonna check what you have taken in your notes. This is just for you. I've seen people taking notes in a in a sequence, like in, in something like this, in a list. If you take notes like this, it becomes very difficult to speak all of them out because you will get confused as to how many phrases you need to speak in each sentence. Here, it's very crystal clear for me that these notes are for my first sentence. These notes are for my second sentence. This is for my third, this is for my fourth. All right. Now, again, the link for the template of retail lecture would be there in the descrip uh, description. You can download that from there. For now, what I'll do is I'll play an audio and I'll just take notes first. And I want you guys just to observe as to what's going on over here. How am I taking the notes? And then obviously you can rewind the video and try taking the notes out by yourself as well. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about changes in air pollution since the middle of the last century and what has created these changes. So, uh, by the 1950s, air pollution was very visible with frequent thick black fogs known as smogs in many large cities around the world. The main source of this pollution was from factories and it caused severe health problems. 
For example, a particularly severe smog in London in 1952 caused over 4,000 deaths. Obviously, something had to be done. And in 1956, a Clean Air Act was introduced in Britain. This addressed the pollution from factories and the smog soon disappeared. However, as you know, these days air pollution is still a big issue. The main difference between now and the night. Okay, so if you look carefully, I have taken my 10 phrases, like I said. Now the audio was still going on. I could have taken way more than that, but just for the purpose of the video, yes, in the exam, I would take two or three more phrases, but for now it's, it's more than enough. And if, if you have a look, every single phrase of mine is at least, at least three words. As you can see, four words over here, three words over here, three words here, three words here. All of them are three words. Some are even four words. And I, how many have I taken? Three, six, nine, and one, ten. Ten phrases, minimum three words in each. If I speak all these phrases correctly with my template, I should be getting a full score for this particular topic. And when I say full score, I mean a perfect 90 or 90 in all my modules, and especially listening and speaking, if I do this topic well. So the phrases that I've taken were part of the sentence, were part of the audio, but do they make any sense on its own? Created these changes by the 1950s was very visible. Now, if I just read out that single phrase, it's not making any sense, but that's the best part about this topic. As long as the phrases that you have taken are directly from the audio and all the words are coming in a sequence, you should be all good to get a perfect score. Computer doesn't want you to make sense in this topic. You don't even have to combine these phrases to make a sentence. You just speak these three phrases out in a row, in a sequence, and you should be all good. The way I would be speaking these three phrases together would be created these changes by the 1950s was very visible. So without taking any pause in between, just speaking all these three phrases together, and I will be getting a full score in my listening. And obviously if I am fluent in pronouncing all the words correctly, getting a full score in my speaking as well. So this is how retail lecture works. Now what I'll do is I'll bring up the template and using the template, I'll speak out all these phrases just so I can show it to you guys how exactly a sample answer would look like in the real exam. So this is my template. So as you can see, very easy template. And obviously we are going to speak our phrases that we have just taken over here. So this is how I would be speaking my template alongside the phrases. First sentence would be, the lecture is talking about changes in air pollution. I don't even have to try to make a sense. I just speak my template with my content. The lecture is talking about changes in air pollution. It also denotes created these changes by the 1950s was very visible. In addition to that, around the world, severe health problems caused over 4,000 deaths. To conclude this lecture, and in 1966, Clean Air Act, smog soon disappeared, was also mentioned. And this is how I would be speaking my retail lecture in the real exam. As you would have seen in my template was also mentioned was not there at the last sentence, but I just added that just to complete the sentence. But again, you don't even have to, as long as you just speak, whatever you have written, you should be all good. Now, one final tip I would give you is the seven seconds that we get in the real exam. Once the audio stops to play, what I normally do is, sorry, what I normally do is, when I get those seven seconds after the audio finishes, I'll start reading out these phrases that I've written very quickly. Because once the audio starts, I won't have enough time to figure out as to what I've written. First of all, handwriting should be neat enough. I'm not saying you have to have a very good handwriting, but at least that much that you can understand what you have just written. But again, quick enough. And you have to make sure when you read out these phrases, all these phrases should not make sense. It doesn't really matter, but when you get those seven seconds you have to make sure that you just read it out this is what i'll do is in those seven seconds created these changes by the 1950s was very visible around the world sphere health problems cause of 4000 deaths so you just revise whatever you have written this is a challenging task because if you do not revise there is a chance that when you start speaking it out with the template in the recording time you may fumble on certain words because you may not understand your handwriting but this will come with practice in the seven seconds read out all the phrases just so that it would make sense to you. And when the recording starts, you don't even have to think about what you've written. Everything is already there and writing is decent enough and you should be able to speak all these phrases in a sequence 
inner flow without affecting your fluency and pronunciation. And one final topic that we have is answer short questions. Very easy and simple and I would say not important topic, but we have to cover because it's part of the speaking module. Now answer short questions. This is again how the interface would look like in the real exam. So as the name of the topic says, answer the short questions, a question would be asked to you, a general knowledge based question, and then your job is to give an answer for that one. Answer could be one word answer or it could be a couple of words as well. There's no limit as to how many words you need to speak in the Pearson's official score guide, but I would not prefer speaking more than two, three, four words. It's not required, it's not important. You just speak something and you get your full score. Number of questions that you can get for this particular topic in the exam would be five to six. Yes, you do get preparation time for this one, as in like three seconds, so it'll say beginning in three, two, one. The question is played and afterwards for the and for the answering time, you get about 10 seconds to speak your answer. Now, like I said, very straightforward and basic question. The marking for this topic, you get marks in listening and speaking both. For listening, you get about one to two marks out of 90. And for speaking as well, you get about one to two marks out of 90. So yes, if you're aiming for a perfect 90, this topic will count for you. If you're aiming for 79, yes. Even for 65, if, if a topic is simple, why would you wanna jeopardize your one to two marks? The best tip and strategy and trick I would say for this particular topic would be, if you know the correct answer, speak your correct answer. If you do not know the correct answer, speak something and move on. Just speak something in English and you will still be getting this one to two mark. The question says, what is the capital city of Australia? For example, let's say if I do not know, I say Canberra or I say Sydney or I say Adelaide, I say Perth, Brisbane, anything and everything. Look, even if you say United States, even if you say San Francisco, even if you say New York, anything and everything that you say, as long as the word is in English, you will still be getting this one to two mark. Now, I'm not saying in the exam, go and deliberately start giving the wrong answers. If you know the correct answer, give the correct answer. If you do not know the correct answer, speak something in English and move on. You will be rest assured you will still be getting this one to two mark. That is why once you have understood what this topic is, it is not required to practice this one. You don't want to waste even five minutes on preparing this topic. It's not required. Just prepare something else in the meantime rather than preparing this topic. And this is what Answer Short Questions is all about. So this is what I wanted to create as my very first video for the full course. This is the complete speaking and you need to understand what speaking is all about. After this, me and Mohit would be coming up with the remaining portion of this particular full course in the other videos. Three more videos for you guys. One would be the writing full course, one would be the reading full course, and another one would be the listening full course. So stay tuned if you haven't subscribed already, you, you may as well just do it now just so that when the other videos are also out, you, you do get notified about them. If you need any one-on-one -on -one support with me or Mohit, we are always available with our one-on-one -on -one consultations, 30 minutes to one hour. Also the crash courses and all that stuff we do run on the long alongside. For Nati preparation, Nati Hindi, Punjabi or Gujarati, all three languages are available. Either the coaching or just the prediction file, which has got the exam audios. We keep on, those audios keep on repeating in the real exam if you need that. All those kind of things are available if you wanna get in touch with us. You can either get in touch with us on Instagram or Facebook. The links would be there in the description. If you have any sort of questions or content ideas, you can post them down in the comment section below and we can make those videos on a priority basis. With that, I'm done with this, done with this video. There would be other videos along the way. It was great sharing with all of you. All the best if you have got an exam coming soon and I'll see you guys in the next video.